Hello, everyone. Welcome to the webinar for the Bachelor of Arts and Liberal Studies program. We're just going to give participants a few more seconds to join before we get started. Excellent. Um, well, once again, thank you so much for being here with us this afternoon. My name is Dr. Michelle Onona. I'm the faculty director of the BA in Liberal Studies program here at Georgetown. We're really delighted to have you with us. Um, and we look forward to being able to answer your questions and share more information about the program throughout the next hour. Um, I'll start really quickly uh, with team introductions. So as I mentioned, um, I'm the faculty director, which means I attend to all of the academic components of the program, including curriculum design, course development, faculty recruitment. I also teach in the program. And I am in my 11th year at Georgetown. So I've taught a variety of courses in person, online, undergraduate, graduate courses, um, and it continues to be a great honor to be a part of the institution. So with that, I'll hand things over to our Assistant Dean, Trey Sullivan. Thank you, Dr. Onona. Hello, everybody. Nice to meet everybody here. I'm Trey. I'm the Assistant Dean in the Liberal Studies Department. I work with our undergraduate students here, obviously, for the Bachelor of Arts and Liberal Studies program, but also support our two graduate liberal studies programs, a Master of Arts and Liberal Studies program and a Doctor of Liberal Studies program. This too, like uh, Dr. Anona, is my 11th year uh, at Georgetown and my 11th year connected to this uh, Bachelor of Arts and Liberal Studies degree program. I've had a couple other appointments uh, before the one I'm currently in now. And I work with the students and faculty and uh, support, uh, support our um, students at various points in your um, time with, with us in the degree program. And again, it's my pleasure to meet everybody. And thanks for joining. I'll hand it over to, to our program, uh, program director, Samantha. Thank you, Trey. Hi, everyone. My name is Samantha Hinckley, and you may have communicated with me before, but I am the program director officially for the Liberal Studies uh, bachelor's completion program, which means that I'm the academic advisor. I work with the rest of the team to make sure all of our students are successful in their efforts while they're at Georgetown. So I'm very excited to have you all here. I am, I've been in this position for one year and I officially one year and I'm very excited about it. This is an incredible team. Um, I, I cannot sing their praises enough. So if you decide to join us, you will be fully welcomed and um, embraced by a very, very special group here. So welcome again. And I'll pass it to David, the program manager. Thank you, Samantha. Hi, everybody. My name is David. I've been with this team for four years now. No, five, almost five years. Yeah, going on almost five years. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and um as a program manager, I just help assist the team administratively while um, helping our on-ground students, but focusing on our Coursera students here now and helping however I can to assist you along your academic journey. And great to meet you and hope you take away a lot from this webinar. And I'll pass it along to our admissions team. Um, I'll go uh, first. Uh, um, my name is Mitch. Um, I work in the admissions office um, as an admissions recruiter. Um, I may have spoken to some of you before in the past, um, but generally um, I can answer questions about the um, application requirements, admissions process, um, and general information about the program um, and SES. Um, so yeah, and with that, I'll pass it off to Ty. Hi, everyone. I'm Ty. Uh, some of you may have communicated with me. I work a lot uh, behind the scenes, working with transcripts and documents. Um, so if you're missing a, a document in your application, uh, you might get a, an outreach from me. Um, I also assist with uh, answering some of the questions um, as well and work very closely with Tom and Dion, who some of you might have also spoken with. 
um, to, to make sure that everything is, is showing up system wise and everybody can help get all of the, the information in um, where it needs to be. So I'll go ahead and, and pass it off to Samantha. I'm gonna, we're gonna go back to me, I think uh, right now, but, but thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, one degree of separation. Um, this is a great team, everybody. I'm, I'm very proud to, to work with this group of human beings. We, we care deeply about one another and obviously care deeply about uh, the students that we serve here at Georgetown. And we're so happy to uh, be able to engage with you in this moment here, the synchronous webinar moment, and hope that it's not our only uh, time that we, we get to engage with you. If you started an application, if you're maybe considering various uh, schools to, to either begin or complete your bachelor's degree, uh, we're, we're happy to be in, included in your discernment process. So as we go through this webinar, we encourage you to um, be present with us as we're, we desire to be present with you here. And we encourage you to um, think aspirationally about what could be about your goals and your dreams and and the priorities that you have for yourself and for your family and all those connected to you and um and and again we we're thankful to be able to engage with you here uh, i want to call out here thank you everybody for in uh, being so active in the chat thank you for putting in there where you're from maybe where you live now currently and i encourage you to keep doing that um, you know, we love to see where, where people are from. This truly is a global community of students, faculty, and staff. And um, it's, it's great to, for, for us to see where everybody's joining, uh, from where everybody's joining. Uh, one final note before we jump into the formal presentation here. Uh, some of you have, have come here just with a, hey, let me go dip my toe in and see, see what's going on with this degree program. I've heard about Georgetown, haven't really done much research. I'm still in the very nascent stages in my discernment process, and you, you, you just want to kind of see what's going on and hear from us. Other people have come with very specific questions. Maybe you've been researching uh, degree programs, or you've been dreaming about completing or starting your bachelor's degree for many years. And for those of you who do have specific questions, I encourage you to utilize the Q&A function. Uh, there in the bottom part of likely in the bottom part of your zoom window. So if you have a specific question, go ahead and put it in the Q and a uh, option there. We, of course, will leave time at the end of the formal presentation for um, questions and we'll respond to your questions then. But in order for us to get to everything, we typically like to have the questions uh, posed throughout the broadcast so we can real time respond to you either by typing a response or by addressing the question real time while we're going through the um, through the presentation. So uh, our colleagues, um, me and my colleagues will respond to your questions either by, thank you, there's somebody already popped one in there. Thank you very much. So we'll get to your questions as we go. And again, if we're not able to get to all the questions, there likely will be outstanding questions at the end of the broadcast. Please email us, be in touch with us. We'll have our contact info at the end of the end of the slide. Excellent. Okay. Here's a few a few points about our school, about our ethos, about how we define ourselves. Uh, you can see there. I won't read through all these specifically, but the fourth point is is uh, is important for us to call out that Georgetown. Uh, we are rooted in the Jesuit values, and our courses prepare you not only to engage in a new professional space or maybe apply to grad school or develop specific applied professional skills, but they also prepare you to think, to reflect and act with intention. There's a depth to what we're doing here at Georgetown, like many of many institutions in the United States and around the world, uh, but we too uh, uh, attempt to live into those, uh, into those values. Next slide, please. All right, a few objectives here. Let me go through this quickly. We're going to introduce the School of Continuing Studies in Georgetown. We're going to define what liberal studies is. We're going to give you an idea of what our curriculum is, so you know exactly what it is you'll be doing in our degree program. We want to make sure you leave today knowing how your previous academic work may blend with our program. That is, we'll talk all about transfer credits and, and how we think about and, and apply transfer credits. 
We're going to talk about the professional and educational goals uh, and conclude with admissions requirements. At the end of our broadcast, we want to help make sure you can answer the question. And my cat is coming to say hi, like he likes to do in our webinars. Thank you, buddy. Sorry, let me put you down. He's so upset now. Uh, we want you to leave uh, answering this question. Is this program a good fit for you? Uh, because while we may think, yes, the Bachelor of Arts and Liberal Studies degree program at Georgetown is great for everybody, it doesn't always work for everyone. And so this webinar is not about a sales pitch. It's not about us as, as faculty and staff at Georgetown. It's about you. And we want to make sure we honor you in this time and honor your specific journey. And uh, saying no to Georgetown may be so that you can say fully, more fully yes to somewhere else. So we want to make sure and, and um, walk with you intentionally during this time. Next slide, please. All right, before I hand it over to uh, Dr. Anona, I'm going to say a few words about uh, what we call or how we define the spirit of Georgetown, and this includes a little bit of our history. Uh, Georgetown was founded in or established in 1789 by Archbishop John Carroll. Uh, Georgetown is the oldest Jesuit and Catholic institution in the United States, well, institution of higher learning, that is, in the U.S. Uh, in these 200 years, we've uh, grown into a university that exists among uh, across 10 different schools five different campuses and, and, of course, an affiliated hospital. Um, our schools include the School of Foreign Service, the School of Law, the School of Business, and, of course, our School of Continuing Studies, just to name a few. Georgetown is one of the world's leading institutions. It builds on a unique and distinctive history with a very specific value set, that is, a commitment to justice and the common good, Georgetown ed educates men and women in the Jesuit values, that is, to be reflective lifelong learners, to be responsible and active participants in civic life, and to live generously in service to others. This is not, um, uh, you know, company speech. It's not something that we, um, we just sort of speak out of one side of our mouth and then live out of another side of our mouth. We really desire to treat you as students in our program, as community members with respect, because we truly value the dignity of, of each human person. At Georgetown, you are not treated like a number, you're not treated like a box that we check or some task that we have to accomplish during the day, you're treated like a human being. And we, we encourage all of our students uh, to treat others, to treat themselves, to treat their classmates, with that same respect and with that same dignity. You will find that this is a culture of care, that this is a culture and a community of people who do truly care about each other. And um, uh, as we often say, we, we want to welcome you with hospitality and uh, kindness. In addition to all the great things that we're doing pedagog pedagogically and academically, et cetera. So um, I think that's all from my bit. If we'll go to the next slide and I'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Anona. Thank you so much, Trey. Um, so this is an opportunity to give you a sense of the program. And I think um, based on some of the questions that I'm seeing come up in the chat and the Q&A, hopefully this will be useful for you in discerning um, what our program is and is not. Georgetown, of course, is a very large university. We have many different undergraduate uh, degrees many different graduate degrees um, at both the master's and PhD level. So I'm gonna clarify what this webinar is about and our program specifically. So if we can go to the next slide. So um, first of all, our program is a program in liberal studies. So students in our program are effectively liberal studies majors. And what that means um, is that you benefit from a program of study that is unrestricted by typical boundaries between disciplines, um, which allows students to approach topics and issues from different perspectives in order to be able to solve complex problems using skills from a range of different scholarly traditions. So I'll talk a little bit uh, more on the next slide in greater detail about what, what that looks like in, um, in our curricular structure. 
So a little bit about, was this supposed to be the next slide? I think maybe we may have skipped a slide. Thank you so much. Um, so our program is a bachelor's completion program, which means that most of our students have some prior experience in higher ed and are transferring in credits. We try to design the curriculum with that in mind. Um, so our curriculum is designed to provide students with intellectual and professional skills that will enable them to advance in their chosen career or academic field. So what you'll find in our curriculum is a strong emphasis on the humanities and social sciences that forms the foundation of our curriculum. You'll also find that we have opportunities for students to choose concentrations that allow them to be exposed to several different professional disciplines. So again, drawing on that foundation in the humanities and social sciences to then um, explore or deepen your, your knowledge um, of professional disciplines. There is a strong emphasis on communication, on problem solving skills and critical thinking skills that you'll find really undergirds all of our courses across disciplines because we believe that these skills are universally in demand um, and universally helpful across all kinds of different career paths. So as I mentioned, um, our program is designed with adult students in mind. So we do have a very generous transfer credit policy. Um, we do our best to honor your prior college and military experience by allowing you to transfer up to 64 credits into the program. And courses are designed to maximize flexibility while maintaining the rigor and high standards of Georgetown University. So our courses are delivered asynchronously, meaning there are no fixed meeting times for the classes, but there are optional live sessions with faculty and teaching assistants. Um, so those are recorded if you're not able to attend, but students are invited to engage with their faculty, classmates, teaching assistants um, during those live sessions. Um, you can see here that the total number of credits is 120, so that would include any transfer credits that you bring in. Um, that's, of course, the standard number of credits for an undergraduate degree. Um, students can be enrolled full-time or part-time. Most of our students take one to two classes, but of course, that's a decision um, that you can arrive at based on your other um, uh, life obligations. And as I mentioned, we really maintain the same rigor and standards of um, our other Georgetown classes that meet in person. So that means that you can expect to be working approximately six to 10 hours per week for each class that you take. Um, so they are, they are rigorous. Um, we are an accredited program, and that means that we have to meet the same standards as any other in-person um, uh, program. You'll see here um, our, the tuition is $400 per credit hour. We'll have some opportunities to answer that, um, answer more questions around tuition and financial aid and scholarships and all of those things later on. Um, but that means that one three credit class is $1,200. So that's just a, a general overview of our program. And I'll hand things over to Samantha. Thank you very much. Um, so we have some exciting changes to our curriculum happening in fall 2024. So if you're applying for the summer semester or even considering the fall and beyond, um, I'm going to share with you the overview of what we currently have, since you probably have seen it on the website, but also give you our new structure so that you can see what we have on the horizon. So. On this slide, these are the degree requirements currently. Um, still 120 credits. There's core areas, um, concentration areas, and then general electives, which make up the three buckets that the degree is consists of. Um, right now, you'll see that the in order, it goes six courses, 16 courses, and 18 courses. And 
in the general elective section, you can see that that's where we would apply transfer credits first and foremost. Starting in the fall, oh, next slide. I just clicked my button <laughs> and I was like, oh wait, I'm not driving. Um, starting in fall though, we've shifted this a little bit so that students can really grasp the interdisciplinary uh, culture that we tried to embrace here. So the required core classes will change to four. The concentration areas will be six courses or 18 credits total. And we'll talk about that on another slide. And then general electives are going to bump up to 24 to 30 courses, depending on um, whether you take two concentrations, if you decide to do that or bring in transfer credits. So we really wanted to allow students the flexibility to take multiple different courses and concentrations so that they can pursue a liberal studies degree that suits them best academically, professionally, and personally. And if we go to the next slide, these are the four core areas that we will have starting in fall. And this is reduced from six because we ultimately saw a lot of similarities with them. And so we thought to envelop them um, into four different areas. Now you'll see that we have some example courses listed. This is because although the core areas, the core topics are required, there aren't required courses within each area, if I'm explaining that correctly. So in order to successfully fulfill the humanities core area, for instance, we don't have a specific intro to humanities course. Students can pick whatever relevant class it, uh, that suits their fancy. So you could pick cities on celluloid, let them eat culture, or religion and the word, and you can decide for yourself which one, where you would like it to be placed. So um, feel free to look through this list. We have a couple examples that we're offering for summer as well in a later slide, but the four core areas will be humanities, writing, philosophy, and science. And that includes both natural and physical sciences. I believe, right. And all of this is essentially, again, focusing on that interdisciplinary aspect that we cherish here. It ultimately gives every student a foundation of higher level skills that can help them in any career field, such as critical thinking, cultural understanding, and international and global appreciation, communications, and ultimately human values, hearkening back to that humanity aspect. Uh, okay, next slide, please. So again, we are shifting the concentration areas starting in the fall. So you'll see some classes popping up now, especially in our new cybersecurity analytics and technology concentration, which is the fourth one listed there. But we also have business and entrepreneurship, politics and international relations, media, communications and humanities, and interdisciplinary studies, which essentially means, and I love that Dr. Anona says this all the time, um, it is a choose your own adventure, plan your own way to get that concentration, meaning especially if you have graduate, uh, graduate school goals, um, going to law school, um, public policy, you can take courses on criminology or um, social justice or, education that can all really help pair your transcript together that makes it most beneficial to your goals because we really want every individual student to be successful wherever they may go after Georgetown. So you will find more information on each of these on the website to come, but here's just a quick look of what is on the horizon for us. And as promised, here are some examples of the courses that we're offering this summer in case you decide to join us this summer. So I'll let you read through all of them and I won't bore you with my voice, but just to name a few, you know, theology, education and virtue, childhood in America, design thinking for entrepreneurship. Some of these can um, fulfill one or two concentrations or they can fulfill a concentration area or a core area. And I do want to just flag because I know we got a question about it. 
if, for instance, you took um, introduction to business and you wanted it to be paired with the business and entrepreneurship concentration, it could not double count for a core area as well, just as an example. Um, one course can be paired with one relevant area, either a concentration area, a core area, or as a general elective. So lots of flexibility in this program. I believe I will pass it to David. Thank you, Samantha. And then moving towards transfer credits, uh, a huge part of our program, the BLS program accepts up to 64 transfer credits. So if you come in with those maximum amount of credits, you're responsible for, for about 56. So that's around 19 courses to complete the degree. Um, transfer credits are input by program staff and they're evaluated by a C or better. Uh, 2.0, there's a conversion key accredited institution, whether that be um, a recent university college, community college, JST, AP, IB, or club credits, and then they have to be academically relevant to our program. So we will be making sure that the credits hold merit to the program and that we can transfer them in successfully. And this is a somewhat tedious process, so we do try to get these transfer credits in by your first year. And any questions related to that, of course, you can send over to the email that we will show and send to you as well to answer those questions because they tend to get individual specific. So we don't want to take up too much time unless you put them in the Q&A. We can answer them at the end. Next slide, please. And then, of course, student services. We implore you while you're a member of the Georgetown University to take advantage of everything Georgetown has to offer. On the top left, you'll see the SCS Writing Lab. We encourage all of our students to go to the SCS Writing Lab. It's the equivalent of getting your paper um, graded by an English professor before turning it into your actual course. So again, you may have not written in a while, may wanna just dust off those skills. So we implore you, please visit the SCS Writing Lab. They can help you from research to just general review or any questions when it comes to writing your assignments. And with the BLS program, you will do a degree of writing. So again, please go to the SES Writing Lab. The top right, you'll see the Academic Resource Center, commonly referred to as ARC. They put on a lot of networking events and things to the academic um, and professional relations. So of course, take advantage of this when you're looking to essentially transfer careers or just you can dust off those interview skills or any skills related to professional development. The bottom left, you have counseling and psychological services referred to as CAPS. We also implore students to take care of their mental health and well-being and counseling and psychological services are the community that provides that support. And then bottom right, academic advising will link you with program staff that can help you answer any questions, whether that comes to course selection or just general questions related to the program itself. That'll be Trey, Samantha, me, even Dr. Anona, if it gets to that level. Um, and I think that's, oh, wait, one more slide. Next slide, please. And then of course, some common misconceptions. This will be reflective of things you heard from Dr. Anona, Trey, or Michelle. Um, it's been too long since I was last in the classroom. I'll never finish or I have to sacrifice to finish. It's too expensive to invest in. These are just things that we hear from students. We want to just one last time urge you that this program is designed for you and to dispel these common misconceptions about Georgetown and the bachelor's program. So this degree will do almost all of these things if completed. And we hope that we're here to help you accomplish your academic goals. And hopefully those reflect your professional and life goals as well. And we're here to help you across that finish line. And any questions, again, please put them in the Q&A. And you can see right there, thanks to that slide click, um, some of the data reflective of this, that people with bachelor's degrees make approximately 20,000 more a year. Of course, there's the options for internal scholarships, employer benefits, GI Bill, and Yellow Ribbon Program. And then a 22,000 total tuition costs if you come in with those maximum 64 transfer credits as of summer 2023. This is what the degree will cost you to complete on time. And any more questions can be answered again through our BLS email that'll be handed out. And I will pass it off to the admissions team. Excuse me, I was muted there. <laughs> uh, thank you, David, for all that great information. 
Um, we're going to switch gears here and talk a little bit about the um, admissions process. Um, and I'm also going to cover a few financial resources available. Um, just as a reminder, just as you all have been doing, um, just continue to uh, ask questions in the Q&A. Um, I'm going to be going over quite a bit of information. So um, just uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and add those there, and we will get to them uh, shortly. All right. So first, um, in order to be considered for admission to the BLS program, um, applicants must complete our online application. Um, there is no fee to submit the application. Um, in addition to that online application, we do require official copies of your high school transcript or GED certification if no college credit has been earned. Um, we also require transcripts from all previously attended institutions. Um, these documents can be unofficial when you're applying, and then if admitted, an applicant will need to provide a degree conferred transcript by the start of their first term. Um, this process is a little bit different for those of you who attended an international institution. Um, if you attended an institution outside the U.S., um, this includes high school or an equivalent, you must obtain a course-by-course -course evaluation by the evaluating services of either WES, ECE, or SPANTRAN in order to be considered for review. Um, we also have a uh, English proficiency requirement. Um, this is done by the TOEFL or IELTS exams. Um, so the TOEFL or IELTS exam scores are required if English is not an applicant's first language, unless they attended an institution where the language of instruction was English. Um, we also have some optional application materials. So you can optionally submit a resume or a CV, um, a statement of purpose, an academic or professional letter of recommendation, um, or a writing sample based on the prompt on our How to Apply page. Um, so these aren't required, but if you feel that it is important to um, maybe provide um, some context to your application, or maybe it will strengthen your application, um, you can go ahead and include those. Um, our application review process is holistic. Um, so that means that we take each piece of the application into consideration when we are reviewing these applications or when they're reviewed by the admissions committee. Um, I also wanted to mention that uh, for those of you who have already earned a bachelor's degree, or maybe you earned a master's degree, um, that you are eligible to apply to either our Master of Arts and Liberal Studies programs um, or our doctoral programs. Um, I am the recruiter for those programs as well. Um, so I'll have my contact information at the end of the presentation, um, just in case you're curious in those um, programs as well. All right, so here we're going to move on to the application deadlines. Um, so you here you can see all of the um, deadlines for the terms here. Um, our next final deadline is for the summer term, um, which is coming up April 15th. Um, we do take um, applications on a rolling basis, um, so you don't need to wait until the final deadline to hear an admissions decision back. Um, we typically take between, uh, between two or three weeks to return an admissions decision. Um, and like I said before, that final deadline is coming up for the summer term on April 15th. So um, if you're interested in applying for that term, go ahead and get those submitted. Um, as soon as possible, um, and then you should hear that admissions decision uh, soon. Um, I also want to mention that we do not offer visa support for this program, um, as online programs are not eligible for student visas. Um, the last thing, too, I'll mention here is um, that scholarship applications um, typically open around the priority deadline for each term. Um, so it's important to note that in order to be eligible for scholarships, you must have already been admitted to the program. So scholarship applications are not reviewed until after the scholarship deadline. Um, but if you are interested in getting a head start on your scholarship application, um, applying by that priority deadline should ensure that you should get an admissions decision around when the scholarship applications open. So it just kind of gives you a little bit of a head start. You get that admissions decision, and then you can go ahead and start applying for those scholarships if you're interested in them. All right. All right, we're going to switch gears again here and talk a little bit about financial aid. Um, I'm going to highlight a few resources that can help with funding the cost of your degree. Um, the first resource is our financial aid office. Um, the financial aid office assists students in financing their Georgetown education um, through a combination of federal student loans, um, external scholarships, and as well as employer benefits. Um, your potential eligibility to borrow is determined based on the information submitted in your FAFSA and uh, SES supplemental forms. 
Um, our official or our financial aid office has a very detailed website um, that provides a lot more information on the student loan process and how to apply your FAFSA award. Um, so I highly recommend checking out um, our website. And if you have any questions, go ahead and um, send an email to SES Financial Aid or FinAid at georgetown.edu, and they'll be better able to answer your questions. Um, we also offer payment plans through the Office of Revenue and Receivables. Um, they offer different payment plans for periodic payments throughout the term and the year. Um, we also, the university also has a very active and supportive veterans office. Um, they can provide more uh, information on how to apply your GI Bill and yellow ribbon benefits towards your tuition. Um, if you have any questions about that, you can reach out to militarybenefits at georgetown.edu and they'll be better able to answer your question. Um, we also offer a limited number of service-based scholarships on our webpage um, outside of BLS. So I would highly recommend you check those out um, for some potential opportunities. Um, and you may also want to speak to your employer to see if they have um, any benefits um, for tuition assistance as well. All right, so lastly, we do have a few scholarships um, or service-based scholarships available. Um, students are awarded scholarships um, for completing service terms uh, with or uh, who are currently employed by eligible organizations. Uh, many of these scholarships are awarded either as a tuition discount or a dollar or a dollar amount. Um, so I'm going to highlight a few here. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail just so we have enough time um, for questions here. Um, the first one is the Osher and Crankstart Reentry Scholarship. Um, these are two separate scholarships that offer up to $5,000 per student per academic year to students who have a cumulative gap in education of five years or more. Um, so there's uh, some here, uh, some requirements here to demonstrate financial need um, and to commit to completing the BLS program. Um, we also have the LaForge Scholarship. Um, this awards three scholarships to or three students per academic year. So one student from uh, Montgomery College, one from Northern Virginia Community College, and one student from Prince George's uh, Community College as well. Um, to qualify, students must have a cumulative GPA of 3.0 or more, um, but they will receive that 50% reduction in tuition. Um, so if you're interested in those or you have gone to those um, community colleges, um, definitely uh, check out that opportunity. Um, we also have a scholarship with the Phi Theta Kappa Bridge Scholarship. Um, this award to one member of the Phi Theta Kappa uh, member each year um, entering the BLS program. The scholarship grants the student a 50% reduction in Georgetown tuition costs for the duration of the student's time in the Bachelor of Arts and Liberal Studies program, um, as long as the student uh, maintains a cumulative GPA of 3.5 in Georgetown courses um, additionally, the student must have completed at least 35 credits from their two-year institution and demonstrate financial need. Um, the last scholarship I'll highlight is the CoLab Digital Tech Credential Scholarship. Um, this scholarship awards uh, $2,500 per student per year for the students who are enrolled or are planning to enroll for the CoLab Digital Tech Credential. Um, students, uh, this is particularly good fit um, for students who are interested in the business and entrepreneurship concentration, um, because a lot of the uh, requirements for the degrees overlap. Um, so this would be a particularly interesting uh, scholarship for uh, you to, pers uh, to pursue. Um, you can find more details about our scholarship requirements, our deadlines, and um, some application links on our scholarships tab of the Bachelor of Arts and Liberal Studies program uh, webpage. Um, so if you're interested in any of those, or you need more specific information, I would highly recommend checking those out and that will kind of lay everything out for you. All right, and with that, um, I'd like to thank you for your attention throughout the presentation. Um, I know that was a lot of information that I just, that we all just gave to you, um, but we'll now open it up from questions from you. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and start sending your questions over and we'll get to them shortly. Um, and with that, I'm going to send it, uh, pass it back to Trey and I will just highlight our uh, contact page as well. Beautiful. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you, colleagues, uh, for your investment in this time. Um, I want to um, call back to one of our slides that um, we we addressed, but I think it's it's important for us to speak briefly about 
Uh, our community community typically, why do our students want to pursue this this bachelor's degree? Um, who are our students? Uh, what what will your colleagues be? What kind of motivations will they have when you're in the program? Typically, we see students who fall into one of these three buckets. And again, this is not a complete or comprehensive assessment. It's just uh, typically what we see as far as um, motivators for the degree completion at, in this specific degree program. For the most part, students either are, are, are wanting to change their careers. There are folks who are maybe they've hit a ceiling in their current career and um, they've decided, well, I don't have my bachelor's degree and that's really what's holding me back. I really need the bachelor's degree to to get to where I want to be in my career. Then we have students who already have a graduate degree in mind. They they don't have a completed bachelor's degree yet, but they already know I want to go to law school. I want to pursue a master an MBA. I want to I want to eventually get my PhD in history or in uh, uh, women and gender studies, um, or physics, or you know, you know, fill in the blank with whatever interest you have, and they come to us because of our flexibility in our um, the online uh, the online modality, and then the the support of of the university faculty and staff, and then finally we we receive a a number of military connected students who who have benefits that they want to use GI Bill yellow ribbon um, there's housing allowances etc that the university of um, supports so these are these are the th typically the three buckets or profiles or personas that that we see in our degree program and we've gotten a lot of questions about well, what if what if I already have a master's degree or I'm completing my PH degree PhD degree um, you know, I encourage you to reach out to us. And if we could go, Mish, thank you for calling back to this slide. If we could go back to the contact us page at the end or the the, the um, contact page. Uh, I encourage you to reach out to us and schedule a, either a conversation or engage with us via email um, because, you know, it may be in your best interest to do another bachelor's degree, but it may not be, especially if you have a completed master's degree or degrees and or are working on a terminal degree like a PhD. It may not be in your best interest to to complete another bachelor's degree. And uh, the reason for that is that if you have completed or conferred undergraduate degrees already, we won't be able to apply any of those transfer credits toward our degree. So you'd essentially be starting from zero. And it might not be in your best interest having completed master's degrees already to come back and do another undergraduate degree. But again, it might be in your best interest. We're happy to have that conversation with you. We see this question a lot. Um, we have students with all, all types of academic and professional backgrounds. And so uh, it's likely uh, best for us to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation either uh, via Zoom or via email. So reach out to us, georgetown-bls, Bachelor of Arts and Liberal Studies, bls at, at coursera.org. We'll, um, we'll engage with you there. Colleagues, what to follow up to any of that or other comments that you'd like to make based on the questions that have come through that we'd like to address live? Please jump in. And if there's nothing, we can continue to talk about scholarships. I'm happy to continue to, to do that, but I want to make space. Anybody have anything I... they want to I did want to to highlight something. I was uh, I was busy answering questions, so I might have misheard this. So I added words from the question I was answering into, <laughs> into uh, the speaking. Um, but back on the the admission slides, um, it talks about uh, transcripts. Um, I've seen a number of questions about people who are saying they have a hard, they'll have a hard time getting their high school transcript. We only need your high school transcript if you don't have any previous post secondary institution experience. Um, you know, if you have two classes somewhere, we won't need your high school transcript. We'll just need a transcript from, from where you've had the, the courses. Um, and another thing is, um, and this is the part I'm not sure if I was reading the question and listening and mixing them up, um, but 
you do not need a degree conferred transcript because this is a bachelor's program. It's a bachelor's completion program. So a lot of you will come in with only a couple courses. Some of you will come in with 64. Uh, some of you might have an associate's degree already. Um, it's not a requirement to already have a degree to apply to this program. This program is designed to help people complete their bachelor's or four-year uh, degree. Um, so I just wanted to, to make that clear as well. We do, as Trey was talking about, we do accept people who already have a bachelor's degree, um, but it might not be the best uh, option to apply to this program if you already have one. Um, but we we do, you know, review applications with people who do have them. It doesn't disqualify you from the program. It just might not be the best option. Um, and also, uh, we do have a master's and a doctor of liberal studies um, that are available. They're on campus, unlike this program. Um, but there are also a lot of main campus programs as well um, that might fit you better. Um, I know there's a couple people I was speaking with in the, the Q&A who are kind of interested in finance, and we do have a business school. Um, so, you know, I also encourage you to, if you already have a bachelor's degree, to kind of look around the rest of Georgetown and see if there's a, a program that's a good fit for you. So. Dr. Anona, was there something that you were going to um, bring forward? Yes, I just a couple of questions, some questions about whether or not um, a high school student could apply to the program. So just wanted to reemphasize, our program is really designed to support um, students who have undertaken some college level studies um, and perhaps, you know, have experienced a gap or are looking for a different modality, um, you know, Occasionally, we do make exceptions if there are extenuating circumstances that would prevent a student from attending an in-person program, um, and, and you're certainly free to discuss that um, in your application materials, but we, we really um, look for some college experience um, in our applicants. Um, I will say, too, you know, the, the program is flexible, um, and at the same time, it does require a good amount of self-discipline in order to carve out that time because you don't have a class schedule. Um, it's really up to you to manage your time and to carve out time for study. Um, and that can be challenging um, and, and you know, sort of require a lot from students. Uh, so it's important to bear that in mind that the flexibility does come with an added degree of responsibility. Um, so just to, to underscore um, that a little bit. Colleagues, any other follow-up to uh, some of the questions that are being posed here or um, gaps in the presentation or comments from earlier? On average, I'll note that um, our students transfer in around 50 to 55 transfer credits. Uh, that's the average. As we noted, the maximum is 64, but, but um, most of our students are bringing in quite a quite a large number of transfer credits, but as Dr. Anona noted, um, we while we do typically see transfer credit or previous academic um, uh, higher ed experience, that's not always the case. We sometimes have students start at uh, start at zero, i.e., they're straight from high school. Um, there's a, the significant amount of diversity in our in our degree program and our undergraduate degree program. And that really does um, provide a, a significant uh, level of depth and richness in the discussion, whether you're live discussing in a, in a synchronous uh, lecture or, um, or you're posting to a peer review or uh, engaging with an, one of your other student colleagues. And um, that really does, you know, studying humanities and, and engaging in a humanistic inquiry is really only beneficial in a in a setting that uh, has a, a level of diversity to it. We don't want to just repeat ourselves and 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 all be the same and and make sure that we all think and speak the same. Uh, this is a program that that doesn't want to teach you what to think, but it but it really does pour the foundation for for um, teaching and developing students' ability to think and learning what questions to ask and how to pose questions and how to dialogue. Dr. Anonymous. Oh, I'm sorry, were you finished? <laughs> Please, yep, go ahead. 
Um, just wanted to answer a couple of questions live. Um, so we had um, some questions about the, the GPA requirement for the courses which that we wish to transfer. So of course, those have to be um, courses successfully completed with a grade of C or above. Um, another question about uh, the length of time um, and whether or not credits sort of quote unquote go stale. So they don't. The only exception would be courses that are really um, uh, very technically focused on computer related content or technology. In those instances, um, you know, something like introduction to computers, we would uh, look for a course that is less than 10 years old. Um, but, you know, uh, just to give another example, introduction to philosophy, um, those types of things would absolutely be um, uh, counted. And then last question um, from a student interested in doing a dual concentration in the business and entrepreneurship and politics and international relations, wondering about how to use the McDonough School of Business and the School of Foreign Services resources. Um, so what I can say is that we do often have uh, faculty who teach in main campus programs who are designing courses and teaching them uh, for us in the program. So in that sense, you would benefit from the faculty expertise. Um, but it is important to note that students who are in our program are only able to take courses within our program. Um, so while you might benefit from faculty expertise when they're teaching in, in our program, you would not be able to take courses at those um, uh, other schools um, while enrolled in our program. At the same time, um, one of the things you would find if you were to enroll in our program um, is that we do have a pretty robust set of um, events and activities, many of them available virtually, um, that are happening every single week at the school. Guest speakers, panels, lectures, presentations of all kinds. Um, and those are really exciting aspects, I think, of the intellectual life of Georgetown. Um, and whenever those are being offered virtually, you are eligible to join those as Georgetown students. So I just wanted to answer that. Excellent, thank you. Go ahead, Tari. Oh, I was gonna say, I've also seen a, a few more questions surrounding scholarships, financial aid, and, and financial resources. Um, we have a number of scholarships that Mitch went over um, specifically for the BLS program. There's also some service-based scholarships that SCS offers. Um, but because scholarships are based on very kind of individual needs, there's not really a good way for us to kind of explain everybody who could potentially have the scholarship or not get the scholarship. So I encourage you to go to our website and read through the scholarship opportunities that we do have and see if you fit any of them. Um, you know, contact the financial aid office if you have questions about financial aid or FAFSA. Um, because without the the additional context around everything, there's not a, a way we can just kind of give a blanket statement like, yes, this scholarship works for you. Um, that's something you kind of have to determine when you're reading through the descriptions and if you meet the, the eligibility requirements for them. Um, another thing that I see um, Dr. Nona is, is typing an answer into, but I'll also kind of talk a little bit about this just in a more general term, um, is transfer credits are... Um, for this example, we don't offer physics in our program, um, but just because we don't necessarily offer that specific kind of uh, course subject in our program does not mean that it wouldn't be eligible for potential transfer credits. Um, that's the, the evaluation is done by the program team and they, they look at everything you've taken, what we offer in our courses, what's offered throughout Georgetown and, and do their best to try and award you as many transfer credits as they can. Um, so if you are particularly interested in physics, I don't suggest that this program is probably a good fit for you because we don't have physics as, as courses in our program. But that doesn't mean that you couldn't be awarded transfer credits for potentially those courses if you're looking at doing something else that our program does offer. Totally. And I'll follow up to that, Ty. Thank you uh, very quickly. There was another uh, um thread concerning a preparation for graduate school. And um, if somebody, for example, wants to be pre-med because they wanna go to med school, 
Um, we, of course, do not offer physics one, organic chemistry, um, biology, anatomy, these kinds of things. But uh, depending on the medical school, if you did those courses elsewhere, transfer them into our program and then complete your program, you could complete your bachelor's degree with us, you may be eligible for that specific medical school. It's just that we will not we will not be offering courses specific courses in those disciplines. Uh, however, we do offer science based courses that are interdisciplinary in nature and draw connections between various uh, sciences, social sciences, uh, even hard sciences. Um, but we, we won't offer, we won't be offering courses like organic chemistry one in the fall, organic chemistry two in the spring, et cetera. But you could do, do those courses elsewhere, transfer them in here, transfer them to Georgetown to the VLS program, and then apply and be eligible for medical school. Um, so if you already have a specific school or specific um, graduate uh graduate areas in mind feel free to reach out to us we'd be happy to have a conversation about what that degree plan would look like and how we can or cannot support that um, because we before you you know jump into courses in our degree program we, we just want to make sure you have a, a clear idea on what this would look like for you individually and it, and it can change from person to person so we'll want to have a, a conversation with you so we're closing in on our time here Colleagues, I'm happy to close this out, but anything anything else that um, you feel is necessary to mention before we say goodbye to our new friends here? Anything else? Okay. Yes, I, Samantha. I'm just going to chime in quickly because we had a few comments about international uh, students and visiting campus, and I really want to stress that even though um, we said this before too, even though we're an entirely online program and don't necessarily have an on-campus presence, that doesn't mean you, as Trey mentioned, are just a number to us. We offer special programming um, each semester for our students. If they'd like to join, we're here to listen to their concerns and positive feedback, constructive criticism. Um, we wanna make sure that all of our students are getting the most out of this program. So please don't feel like just because you are um, in South Africa or China that you won't get the best of the entire world that we have here. We have lots of international students, and that's why, as Dr. Anona mentioned, our classes are asynchronous and online. Um, that really helps students to take the weekly coursework at a pace that works best for them. So um, please know that we are a community, even though we're all over the world. What a beautiful note to end on. Thank you, Samantha. And with that, with that, I think we can wrap things up if no one else ahead, has anything. Please. Yeah, uh, thank you again to everyone for being with us uh, today. Thank you for your questions. Um, thank you for your curiosity. And uh, hopefully we've left you with a good amount of information for you to consider as you make this important decision on next steps. Thank you again. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.